1964, when the Beatles made their concert in Dallas, I was doing a noontime talk show. And uh, so I was among the, the media invited to come to the press conference. So the lads came in, they sat all behind this table, and the press conference began. So about halfway through, I decided, uh, okay, I guess it's time for me. So I raised my hand and I was acknowledged, I stood. And the minute I stood up, the four Beatles said, oh, we saw you on the telly today. And they had been watching Channel 5, wasn't that nice? And um, so uh, then I asked my question. And uh, my question was, you are the highest paid performers in show business today. What was the first luxury item you bought for yourself? And all four of them, it was an automobile. I remember when we were all grouped around Paul like that, um, I was trying to get in <laughs> without much success. Um, it, you have to remember, there were not a lot of women at that press conference. And um, uh, so I, I just wanted to be sure that I could uh, hear what he was saying. And, um, uh, and I, I didn't have any particular question that I was wanting to ask him, but I just wanted to, um, it, it, to be in his presence. I left that little group and went over to Brian Epstein, the Beatles manager, the man who discovered the Beatles and made them famous. And I wanted to thank him for making the lads available. So at the end of that little uh, uh, visit, he said, um, well, you are staying for the concert. And I said, uh, I don't really have a ticket. And he said, well, then you'll just come along with me. So I stood all during the Beatles concert, 1964, September 18th, next to Brian Epstein and saw that Beatles concert. All you could hear really that was the screaming of the teenage girls. It was like standing on the ramp next to a 707 airplane. And, and it was just that roar of noise. And I remember at one point I said to Brian Epstein, they could be singing Mersey notes and who would know? <laughs> Discovering the photo was a very interesting experience. The Dallas Summer Musicals had a group coming in called Rain, and they were a Beatles group playing and reenacting Beatles. And the Dallas Summer Musicals, as part of that event, had Andy Hansen, who was a photographer, a well-known photographer in Dallas and beyond. Uh, they knew that he had a lot of photos taken at that 1964 concert. So uh, they had uh, big blow-ups of many of the pictures and they put them all around the lower floor of the uh, music hall. And I was over there to do an interview with the Rain group. And while I was waiting and we were setting up and all, I started going around looking at the pictures. And so I came uh, around this one wall and I was, um, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 feet from it. Uh, uh, but what caught my eye in one photo was a, a pin uh, on the jacket of this person, this member of the press. And I thought, gee, I, I had a pin just like that. And then as I walked closer to it, I, oh my gosh, it, it is I. <laughs> And um, I looked at it and I, I didn't know the picture existed. Uh, I didn't know it was taken at the time. It was a complete revelation to me. I, I felt at that time that uh, these guys really have something that it's, it's more than just rock and roll. And then uh, in writing their music, John Lennon and Paul, um, their lyrics and, and um, what they were, were trying to say about the world we were living in at that time. I, I thought they really had something, you know, it was a way cut above the average. Girls were just going to great extremes to try to get to the Beatles. 
and they were staying at a hotel that was a pretty good hotel at the time, uh, the Cabana it was called, and um, uh, it was on Stemmons Expressway, and I don't know, it's been turned into something else now, it's no longer a motel. But <laughs> uh, I found out later that um, the hotel people had found a girl in, uh, inside the vent system, uh, you know, for the, the ducks, I guess you would call them. <laughs> it was the girl, and how she thought she was going to get to the upper floors <laughs> through that duck system, I don't know, but uh, anyway, they <laughs> hauled her out of there, <laughs> and she was trying to get to the beetles. <laughs>